you're traveling through another dimension. A dimension of not only a film and sound, but mind. A journey into an auditory movie review adventure that must be experienced to be believed. There's a signpost up ahead. Your next stop, the Doomsday Clock. Week 95, 0 hours, 30 minutes to doomsday. We are now going to join this show already in progress. All right, Babs. You know what? Last week was completely fucking random, but I don't care anymore. Everything's going to fucking end. It's all going to die. You know what? Let's just have some fun. I'm in the mood for an excellent adventure. I have a feeling we're about to embark upon a most unprecedented expedition. Once they made history. I must see to it that you die. Now, they are history. Bill and Ted are dead. Welcome to hell. It's the Grim Reaper, dude. How's it hanging, death? But they're having one hell of a time. This is not what I expected this place to look like at all. We got totally lied to by our album covers, man. Taking in the sights. Not bad, dude. We totally knew a guy got one of those in his bucket of chicken. Making new friends. Excuse us, dude. But is there any way we can get back? You may challenge me to a contest. J7. You have sunk my battleship. Best two out of three. What? Enjoying the family. <laughs> no way! Invading the present. I totally possess my dad. <laughs> Battling <laughs> the future. You metal, dude! Excuse us, but your shoes are untied. <laughs> I can't believe you just mailed a death! And meeting their maker. Guy? Congratulations on Earth! Not to mention your other great planets. Mars, Jupiter, Uranus. It's the comeback of all time. Bill and Ted's bogus journey. It's a trip. Best of seven? Damn right! Ah, oh, dude! Left hand red. Ah, yeah! Bill and Ted's bogus journey all right it is fucking darren wilson mate welcome to what's left of the pocket hey you know i'm I'm glad to be here i'm glad to be thank you for letting me inside i got the time fucked up i was wandering around out there for about an hour uh, yeah 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 the time it, time is busted it's fucked mate it was totally non-heinous it was non 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 heinous, I would say, indeed. Yeah. Uh, look, it, just between you and me, this is sadly the last time that we'll be chatting because it's all going to fall apart. Uh, court broke time. It, uh, this whole thing is turning to shit. And I don't know what's going to happen. So I thought, you know what? I'll just invite some people in. We'll have a chat. So uh, you know what? I'm glad that you are here to enjoy Bill and Ted's bogus journey. Uh, insert air guitar sound i yes am, indeed i am extremely happy to be here dude uh under i you know sad pretenses of, you know i'm i'm gonna miss you we've had we've had some times we've had my evil nazi we've had adventures and, yeah yes we've had you frozen we've had you thought out we, we've done so many amazing adventures look we've even had uh we've had adventures with uh giant tarantulas and sand and big buses yeah you've even <laughs> sunk my battleship yeah. <laughs> and even worn silk underwear uh, it's been fantastic <laughs> no one in their right mind <laughs> <laughs> 
No, that I ever in my life would wear black silk yeah. underwear. Silk underwear. No. <laughs> Oh no! Oh, look! Some fantastic, fantastic adventures, and we are, as I mentioned, ending this with Bill and Ted's bogus journey from 1991, with a runtime of one hour and thirty-three minutes, fitting quite neatly into my ability to watch anything for an extended period of time. According to IMDb, a tyrant from the future, Donomalos, uh, creates evil android doubles of Bill and Ted and sends them back. To eliminate the originals. that That's like the thinnest description I've ever read because there is so much more that happens in this movie. So much more. Station. Station. <laughs> Just fucking, oh, so, so much more. To this day, I still say station. Um, and why wouldn't I? So, this movie was directed by Peter Hewitt, best known for, obviously, this movie, and, strangely enough, a number of family-friendly movies, such as 2002's Thunderpants, 2004's Garfield, and 2012's Home Alone Holiday Heist. Oh, my. I, I, I didn't even know they were still making Home Alone movies. I was a little surprised. Uh, I guess I'll I'll give a little secret here. I don't know if you've got Disney Plus in your timeline or. If oh, you've seen. we we have we do have Disney Plus in my timeline. Yeah. Uh, okay. When I first saw the amount of Home Alones they had, I I said that that's not right. <laughs> no, no, that that can't be right. <laughs> There's no way that the the Matrix is broken. There's not five or six Home Alones with at least two or three different children. I, I, I know it is unprecedented, and because I'm aware of obviously Home Alone with Macaulay Culkin, the original one, and then Home with a Bone, the porn parody. That's all I know. Mm, they, yeah, they they uh, yeah. I mean, Macaulay Culkin got really cool as an adult after he got rid of his parents. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> ooh, yeah. So Macaulay Culkin, I think, is really the poster child for the way things are in the world at the moment. <laughs> yeah. It's just, it, it could go either way. <laughs> it just could go either way. And a lot of running around <laughs> screaming. Yes, yes. And leave it at the door, you filthy animal. Um... Now, getting back to the people that are actually in this movie, it has, of course, Keanu Reeves as Ted. I don't need to list the movies that he's in, but I will say a few names and people will go, ah, that's him. We've got, obviously, Neo, Ted, Constantine, John Wick, and I've got to say my personal favourite, Johnny Mnemonic. You know, I will always remember him as the stoner hitman in I Love You to Death. Oh, yes, yes. One of his lesser known roles, but still very good. He plays oh, really well. <laughs> yeah. Who's Rosalie? <laughs> it's so weird though. You, you, like the, it's like people have the picture of like Stoner Bill and then there's John Wick Bill. <laughs> and then that's sort of like, then there's this weird Venn diagram crossover of all the bits in the middle. Like uh, Constantine, somewhere in that Venn diagram too. I quite liked him as Constantine. I thought he was good. Yeah, I like. I'd never read the comics. Oh, so good, so good. Um, yeah, I, I'd never disliked Keanu Reeves. I don't think I, I was never really aware of him as you know a whole or anything else besides you know it's it's Ted it's Ted Theodore Logan. I think that's the first movie I ever saw him in was in bill and ted's excellent adventure and it, mm. you know i sometime in my teens i saw him in i love you to death and i was like oh okay well you know that's a little different because yeah i it's like in speed he's if ted became a cop a little bit yeah but, you know, a little bit smarter but that's because he spent all that time hanging out with uh, jeff jeff daniels um yes. and parents See, unlike the time when he became a cop when he was in point break yeah Teach me to surf. I'm Johnny Utah. <laughs> Johnny Utah. Uh, Best name ever. <laughs> From Ohio State. My my uh, alma mater. I love it. I love it. Yes, Kenny. Oh, so, so good. <laughs> and then you found out that he was like a really cool guy with a tragic story and he did nice things and he rides the subway and then he's John Wick. Yes. I don't, how many John Wicks did they end up before? Before we leave, you have to tell me how many John Wicks they end up making. Look, I, I'm not going to lie. It's nine. Okay. Uh, the eighth one's really weird because it just has the dog. Oh. 
Yeah, let's. Yeah, whatever. It, that, it's very some, weird. Something's revenge, Daisy's revenge, or something like that. Yeah, I something. I, I can't remember, but yeah, like, so the eighth one is one that sticks in memory because it's all from the dog's point of view. Um, <laughs> speaking of things from a different point of view, uh, this movie also stars Alex Winter as Bill and as Granny Preston. Now. It's weird. Like, you talk about Keanu and there's a breadth of work and a, a, a view of this guy who is larger than life. And then you've got Alex Winter, who really, um, best known for this movie and in front of the camera, but he's done, like, a heap of documentaries about stuff like Frank Zappa and, and, and blockchain and a whole lot of technology stuff. And it's like, wow, so bizarre. And Freaked. You've seen Freaked, yes! right? Yeah. Yes, he did Freaked. But yeah, that it's Lost just, Boys, and uh, I mean that's that's like I mean that's a good enough I think credits. Yeah, the Bill and Ted movies, Lost Boys, and Freaked, and then all those cool yeah. ass documentaries. Yeah, it's just like yeah, just walked away from it. Just went yeah, nah. I could, I could do so much more. I don't need to be weird and famous. <laughs> uh, but still a pretty cool guy apparently. So you gotta love that. Now speaking of cool guys, this has the return of George Carlin oh. as Rufus. Rufus. I had a dog called Rufus because of Bill and Ted. <laughs> and you know, he could he even he can pull off those weird felt futuristic <laughs> giant I don't even foam know. clothing. <laughs> yeah. He's just But yeah, he's I, completely I I, at home in it. He he could wear anything. He could be naked and still be one hundred percent cool. I think in the future and in the colorations after the uh the unfortunate incident incident that happens uh, mm. <laughs> at the end of the first part of the movie. Uh, you could really tell that this director was a big fan of comics, I think. Oh, yeah. 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 There's, there's, there's a lot of it where you're just going, it, it's, um, it's very... So I want, it's very Tim Burton to a certain degree, too. Like a lot of weird angles and, and odd lighting and all that sort of stuff. But yeah big big cartoon fan um now obviously we can't um I, I can't talk about george carlin without sharing a fact that i only just learned and it freaks me out a little bit um obviously you know he's george carlin and you know he's 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 amazing but i only just found out from imdb that he was the narrator for the u.s version of thomas the tank engine and friends oh you you did I, I think, yeah, well, uh, see, I, I've only ever seen like British um, Thomas the Tank, which which has um, Ringo Starr as the narrator. Okay, see, I, I've somehow got to see both. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah. So I read that I'm dead man. Went fuck me. <laughs> That's gonna mess up some kids. I mean, he's got a really great voice. Um, yeah, he he would never have done it. He would have told everybody to fuck off. But I would have loved to read a bunch of audio book, <laughs> you know, audio books oh, that, yes. that he recorded. Yeah, that would have been super rad. But yeah, it's just like I, I'm like watching. God, hang, hang on, he was the narrator because I listen. I'm used to Ringo Starr go, "Oh no, Thomas, you can go fuck yourself," <laughs> and <laughs> the fat cunt, fat cunt, fat controller, and it's just. <laughs> What? It's George Carlin. That that was just bizarre. Completely bizarre. And without obviously going too far, Pam Greer as Miss Woodrow. Oh my God. Still hot. Yes. I I was pleasantly reminded of her presence last time. Yes. When when we we just watched this movie. Just watched this movie. It was so good. Now, before we get into obviously the movie itself, um, look, how do you feel about the princess change? It was because they're weird. they're not the same ones. It was weird because they're close, but they they're not the same. Definitely not the same. I'm not sure why. Uh, I didn't really fi- look into why why they were different. But it, even though they're not, I mean, they are the central focus of the movie. Even though they're barely in it, you know, everything's yeah. about the princesses and they're. I mean, what the keyboard player and the drummer for the band. Correct. Correct. Uh, this is. Uh, I. I was. I noticed it this yeah. time. You know, the first time I saw it. No, I. I probably didn't even blink. It's like, okay, there's a. Ev- <laughs> there's everybody. Yeah, that's right. It's just like they're. They're just. They're the same. Um, but it's just like, hang on a tip. No, no, no. That that's not quite right. I mean, I even had to go. Hang on. I actually like. I had to IMDb it just to go. Hang on a minute. That's not who I think it is. And then I went, ah, oh, that's right. It was Diane Franklin. 
And I'm going, I, and I can only suggest that she's gone, yeah, no, I'm too good. Too good to do a sequel in 1991 <laughs> of that, that stupid movie that I was barely in the first time. And it's it's not as noticeable as the Back to the Future Jennifer switch. No, or even, I would even say, even the dick switch in uh, Bewitched. Ah, that's yeah. bla- that that's I am, blatant. I am quite familiar with uh, Bewitched having the name Darren. Uh, yeah, well, exactly. And then, uh, you know, my missus' uh, former last name was Stevens. So I would, oh. get, I would get mail from some giggly junk mail person like Darren Stevens. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I have had people who call me Derwood because they're big fans of Bewitched. Or what's oh, that? Wow. What uh, Samantha's mom calls Darren? Uh, uh, correct. But I, I am a Dude. fan of that show anyway. But it's it's stuff like that, and being named after a J.R. Tolkien character, hmm. you either of embrace course. it or rebel against it. And you know what? Yes, Lord of the Rings is fun, and Bewitched is cool. It's awesome. Yes, yes. Look, um, while, while I don't share that level of pain, um, I am acutely aware of what it's like to be have the name the same as uh, of someone that is uh, acutely famous, being referred to as the son of Satan for most of your childhood, uh, and having people check through your hair to see whether you've got the mark. Yeah, it's funny at first, <laughs> but eventually you go. <laughs> Put the dog down, Damien. You know? <laughs> Fucking hilarious. Part of the reason I had to shave my head, just so I could go, no, look, it's not there. Okay. All right, it's clean. No, mark. no mark. I'm all good. Maybe it's somewhere else, though. <laughs> um. Anyway, moving on from, from the, the scars of childhood. Because uh, <laughs> why not? <laughs> D- why not? So this movie is a set in 2691 A.D., which is a fucking long time in the future. Whereas you mentioned, everyone is dressed in fluoro foam. Yeah, Max Headroom in Dr. Seuss land, future, in the future. <laughs> yes. That, that is actually a really good description, Max Headroom in Dr. Seuss land. See, I should watch that movie again because, what what is it? Which one? Five minutes in the future. The Like the original Max Headroom oh, movie. Oh yeah, I'm it's sure something it's like called, five like, or 15 minutes in the future. Yeah, I think it's like five minutes in the future or something like that. Still quite good. Quite good. I, I remember remember seeing it, although it didn't get a, a wide release. Um, but yeah, not a bad movie. Um, and straight away we're introduced to Chuck Denomalous, who, of course, is the man that gets diplomatic immunity. Yeah. Um, and is in the Pet Shop Boys film clips. Because yeah. that, that's what I remember him from. Um, I think it's the let's make lots of money and you were always on my mind. He's in both of those film clips. Really? That's just a, a weird, weird thing that I remember. Uh, mostly because, aside from my musical taste, I actually really like the Pet Shop Boys. Yeah. Always have. Yeah, they're kind of rad. Um, I don't know. Well, they, they, but they were never like massively big in the States though, were they? It, uh, not not really at least uh, in my my experience but i mean i but know i'm old <laughs> <laughs> uh you know but it's it's not something that i was like i don't know what's this guy talking about uh, <laughs> you know because they're crazy what, old early, man early 80s or i mean yeah I, or at least that i think it's early 80s Okay. So, hang on, you know what? I, I, I'm just going to refer to my telecommunications device, uh, and I will tell you when You Were Always On My Mind was released, um, because that's the one, You Were Always On My Mind. You were, that's not the song by Willie Nelson, not the one I wanted. Um, <laughs> no, not even the one by um, by Elvis, Pet Shop Boys, Pet. Ah, there you go. So, that was released in... Burr, 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 burr. Um, oh, fuck off. You're going to tell me when it was released, you fuckers. Uh, da, 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 da. No, 1987. 1987. Yes. Okay. I think the first CD I ever bought was a Billy Idol CD that my dad didn't want or something, or he just wanted to get five <laughs> bucks off of me. Um, I was quite young. Like most dads will. Yeah. <laughs> Have you got five bucks yet? I'll take that. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, and what was it? What what Billy Idol CD was it? Just, I, just out of pure interest. I believe it was Rebel Yell or whatever uh, oh, album nice. had uh, Cradle of Love on it. 
Oh, Rock the Cradle of Love, which featured in... What movie was Cradle of Love in? Oh. Was that in Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure? I don't oh. know. I mean, there was some good... Uh, the, the, one of the things, although the the ending song of this movie, which we may get to, is kind we of will eventually. cheesy... Um, yeah, but it, it, it's a like it's a post sellout kiss, and, and it's not it's not good. I'll be honest. I, I have the soundtracks of both of these, and that song is probably the one where I was going, nah, not listening, don't care. Yeah, the the only thing that I saw Cradle of Love was used in the Adventures of Ford Fairlane, starring Andrew. That's Chase what it, it is. It is. Um, it is. And that's the one because I also have that soundtrack. Um, Because I like that movie. I think it's a good movie. I think the only Andrew Dice Clay movie that I've seen, or at least a movie where he's the main focus, is what, Brain Smasher, A Love Story? (laughs) Brain Smasher, A Love Story. I was talking to somebody about that just the other day. That that was one of those things that would always be on HBO in the middle of the night when I was (coughs) awake in my basement bedroom, you know? (laughs) Yeah, well, you know what, it's... It's not exactly taxing, and well, let's be honest, it's it's not a great story, but it's it's Andrew Dice Clay, yeah, and it's fun, and he he punches people, but yes, Ford Fairlane, rock and roll detective, one of my favourites. That ha- does have a good soundtrack though. That has a really good soundtrack because it's got a lot of um, it's got Motley Crue on it, all sorts, because Vince Neil plays the lead singer from I want to say Black Plague, who's the band in that movie. Hmm. The more pretty you sure. Know. <laughs> Um, so we really haven't talked too much about this movie. We did mention that, obviously, yeah, this dude, not your fault. Everything's fucked. I told you. It's all broken. Time is just irrelevant now. It's completely irrelevant. Yeah, time is shattered. Um, dogs and cats living together. Complete fucking... So, yeah. (coughs) And apparently I've got something dead in my throat, but still, nonetheless. Um, now, just looking at those desks that they use, I reckon they're not ergonomic and those screens, not practical. No, but I mean, you've seen how Dr. Seuss designs his things. He designs them like a, a sadist. No. Uh, that is true. A sadist it's on indifferent ecstasy, to Dr. Sh- I think is... Yes. Yeah, that's, yeah. <laughs> yeah, indifference to Dr. Scholes, who <laughs> makes stuff for your feet. Yeah. Or Dr. Martin, who makes boots. Great, great boots. Um... Now, what was I going to say? Although I, I, I did like the people that he brought in. <laughs> you know, we oh, had... Uh, the diplomatic... Ben oh. Franklin? Yes. No, no. We, after after we see diplomatic immunity, oh, we, we cut to the school and everyone's in their, their, their fantastic clothes. And then Rufus appears for today's class. Oh, yes. With Sir James Martin of Faith No More. <laughs> no more. Yes. Station! <laughs> we first introduced to the station. Uh, and the, the woman from the 23rd century who created the thing that I can't say because there's too many words. Oh. Now, I was wondering... Uh, you, you've seen a de- you, you, you've seen a decent amount of the George Carlin stand up, I'm sure. I have. Uh, yes, I'm sure. That stuff was highly preserved throughout the annals of time. Mm. Uh, oh, indeed. That, that sounds like something he would say when he's talking about capitalism and consumerism. When he's talking about buying bigger houses to put all your stuff, and, and I mm. feel like it's during when he does his like sing songy. I'm trying to sell you <laughs> this. Yes, have it, have it, have it. Have it, have it. Yes, have yes. it. Dom- is- Dom- Dom- <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I imagine done, done, living in a time without it. Yes, exactly, exactly. That thing, yes, that is very much uh, on par for his normal, uh, his comedy stuff. So yeah, it did have that same sound, but I couldn't repeat whatever it was. That was but it was important um, <laughs> because we can't imagine life without it. And most importantly, do not do your homework without wearing headphones. It's very important. Very important. Repeat. And then, of course, then we we see Denomalous come in. Again, with these people who are all in black, foam black, uh, but in black nonetheless. It's again, giant foam. That must have been so awkward to walk around in. The, the boots are gigantic. They're like moon boots, um, which was a trend that died very quickly, and I'm glad about that because it's not attractive. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. With you, No, you probably didn't. Although you come from a place with snow, so snow boots, same thing, right? Yes, uh, and and there was, there was a time, I don't know if you're aware of ugg boots uh ugg boots see ugg boots uh much to uh much to the consternation of our friends across the water um australians claim that we invented those although new zealanders believe that they did ah well they Uh, they were extremely popular on at least uh campus 
here. Yeah. Every every girl you saw, almost no matter what time of year, you would see some boots. sort of clothes and UGG boots. It's kind of uh, like the uh, it, the starter jackets of the, of that generation. <laughs> Yes, what is it? Isn't it when when autumn comes, it's officially hand solo season. They all wear like blue blue yoga pants, uh, UGG boots, white tops, and and sleeveless puffer vests. Isn't that? How it yeah, all goes? yep. <laughs> that comes right before uh, pumpkin spice season, I believe. Ah, yes, pumpkin spice season. I have no idea what pumpkin spice is. As far as I, I can I tell, see it's the... cinnamon and nutmeg. Or one or and the nutmeg. Other. That's it. Yeah. Cinnamon and nutmeg. Really? That's it. I I think so. I I am not a big fan. Uh, so <laughs> it's only a fleeting memory. But uh, la- yeah. last time I remember pumpkin spice something. That's that's what I yeah. I got away from. I don't know, dude. Because like I said we hear about it and we go, but it's pumpkin, and the pumpkin is like it's a vegetable, and sure you could put cinnamon on it, I suppose. Uh, but still weird. Anyway, it, they're it, trying to stretch it. Just you know, other than jack o' lanterns and pumpkin pie around Thanksgiving, uh, mm. they're it's it's a government conspiracy to prop up big pumpkin. Ah, um, curse you, big pumpkin! You need to get yeah. better, better, better propaganda like Big Sugar. Yeah. Get somebody uh, like Linus. Yeah, uh, yes. See, see what Linus did for the Great Pumpkin. Yeah, see, that's what you need. You need a Linus-level spokesperson. Um, in difference to Denomalous, who is the spokesperson for a new future, which involves animatronic robots. Evil Bill and Ted. Uh, and you know what? I actually think they did the robots pretty well. I, I, I thought they were, they were pretty cool. Yeah, I, I liked how a lot of the time it was just practical effect and somebody was standing behind it with their hands. It's like, oh, okay. Yep. <laughs> I, yeah, look, do flash, just lots of lights and just like stretchy skin stuff. That's it. And That's it holds it. up way better than the computer animation they do when they're going to find station. Yeah, that doesn't doesn't look great. Um, he- heaven is, is not what I imagined. Um, the the resolution is definitely a lot lower than I would have thought it was going to be. Yeah, weird weird colors. It looked lame. I think I think that's Bill and Ted's take. Is heaven? Yeah, heaven lame. looks lame. Heaven is. Yeah, it looks lame. But apparently, it's okay to mug people in heaven, which I thought was a bit weird. Yeah, and, and still get a favor. Yes, still get to talk to St. Peter and, and tell him that every rose has a thorn. Um, every every night has a dawn. Um, thank you. Thank you for that. Um, now, just skipping right back to where we were. Um, of course, the, you know, the robots are out to kill Bill and Ted, so they go back in time in the time machine. Rufus tags along um, and gets lost in the uh, the circuits of time, apparently. Means now, forever. Lost forever. Just, just let me ask you something. You know, you're you're a, a, a real live musician. You know, you've done your time on the road. You've done everything else. Um, it, it, it seemed pretty slack that after they they like um, you know audition to get into the Battle of the Bands, Bill and Ted just leave the girls to roadie all the gear on their birthday. Yeah, on their birthday. How shit is that? And they, and they still love Bill and Ted so much. And yeah, they yeah. they stand there and they talk about, well, this is our one chance to do something, that even though we haven't really practiced in the two years since the last movie. <laughs> Girls, yeah. go go load the van. Uh, we've got to talk to each other. <laughs> yes. And we've got to talk to and convince uh, Pam Greer to let us in because we work at Pretzels and Cheese. <laughs> it's, it, sounds, it sounds somewhere where you've got to wear a hairnet. It sounds like a, a mall, uh, a, a generic mall place or something in yes, an airport. Uh, yes, as, as as Wayne mentioned, I think uh, he called it a Joe job, you know. Uh, I've had plenty of Joe jobs. They almost have the Jeez. same accent, even though uh, what that that's <laughs> Illinois. But yes. yeah, because uh, with San Dimas, I actually didn't know this, but it's a real place. Uh, you know, sometimes it, it's, well, it's a fake place like Westerberg, Ohio. It's not a real place. Yeah, stuff stuff like yes. that. Oh, Heather's! I love Heather's. Oh yeah, that was like one of the one of the first DVDs I ever bought was Heather's. It's just kind of weird. All, all the rewatchability of that, but oh, so good. Hmm. But I didn't realize that St. Demas was a real place. It is. I, well, I, I just took it as written that it was a real place. It sounded real. Yeah. It, it, and it, it seems like it's a good representation of it. Although, because San Dimas is bordered on one uh, one side, I think the east, uh, eastern side of it. 
is bordered by like mountains and stuff. Sort of like where they end up going with uh, it's the other us's. Uh, ah, with with the Star Trek callback. Yeah, uh, <laughs> and uh, it, it's in L.A. County. Uh, it's southern Southern California. Uh, I think not a whole well doesn't seem like a whole lot of people, but it, it's I think it's like thirty something thousand people. Okay, yeah, so it, it's it's reasonable. It's not huge. Yeah, it's, but it's you know it's, it's, a, a, place it's a place where Bill and Ted would work at pretzels and cheese and want to do the Battle of the Bands at the Civic Center and hmm. you know go hang yes, out with it, the ladies and, at the and, ball. There's that water park that uh, from the first. One. It's Waterloop. It's Waterloop. Waterloop. Ah, uh, yes, where you can sneak in as a child wearing long johns, um, which is weird. Uh, now. <laughs> You know, the, the, we're at the birthday party. Their five hundred and twenty first birthday, I noticed on the signs, yeah. and I, I love that. Like no one, no one questions that at all. Yeah, I, I, do you think it's because Bill and Ted are just so outwardly? Well, I don't even. Uh, they're more <laughs> clueless than stupid. It seems because yeah. They do smart things and uh, and, hmm. and and stuff like that, but it's just kind of well. That's Bill and Ted. They they think their girlfriends are from medieval times because they're British. Yes, yes, that, that, that's it. They they they're not culturally aware. I think it's probably the the <laughs> nicest way of putting it. But yeah, they're not 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 stupid, just not aware. And, and you're right. Everyone just goes, yeah, it's just them. It's just the, them. the parents are distracted. You know, Missy has switched dads. Uh, or, or, yeah, now, yeah. Missy, <laughs> M- Missy gets around. <laughs> Not that there's anything wrong with that. She's obviously an empowered woman. Yeah, uh, of legal age in the last film. Uh, only older now, two years older, two years wiser. Yes. She's gotten into <laughs> the occult, it seems. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, very new age occult, although she does have, uh, what is it, the, the banishment of evil or something just underneath all of her all her books about crystals, just randomly just, holding that just, just in just case. Just in case, yeah, because you never know when you're <laughs> having your... You never know. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, just, just as a question for, for, and it's something that I've, I've not bothered to do my homework about, who is Ty Cobb? Ty Cobb. Oh, okay. He is a uh, American baseball player uh, from the, I think it was the late 1800s. It was back in the okay. day. Like, he was a super racist kind of asshole guy. Uh, uh-huh. He he would, and he was kind of, do, do you know who Pete Rose is? I don't know how aware of American baseball. I, I, I think I know who Pete Rose is, but only from a Simpsons episode. Okay, well, yeah, he was from way, way back in the day. I, I think it, traditionally racist for Georgia in that time. Um, mm-hmm. But baseball-wise, I think he retired with the best batting average ever or something like that, or something something close to some of the best stuff. But he would, you know slide into base uh with his feet up uh, and they had metal cleats back in the day so he would try to stab people with his feet. shoes and he uh very ornery drunk kind of guy i think they made a movie about him starring okay. tommy lee jones as him well if you're gonna have someone that's ornery tommy lee jones is probably top of your list yeah because he he's he's angry all the time <laughs> yeah, he plays gruff. He plays gruff very well. Yes. That's kind of the impression yes. I got of Ty Cobb. He was one of those people that people around me who were really into baseball would talk about. It. I was like, oh, he was horrible, horrible person when he wasn't playing baseball. He was a bad person when he played baseball, but he was really good at baseball. Okay. All right. Now, well, that, that, that gives me the facts. Why Missy wants to talk to him, I don't know. Uh, she, she it's kind likes of weird. But... older men. So. Well, she does. She uh, That's like, if he's, he's in the 1800s, that's super old. Yeah. She's got a type. She's, yeah. she's got she the She does cop. have a type. Yep. Cop and the psychiatrist. <laughs> now she's got to get the guy that uh, needs both. Uh, well, exactly. Um, was, he, was Ted's dad a psychiatrist? I thought he was a professor of some sort. Is that what he was? Okay. I, I, he was an academic. It, it yeah, of some know. sort. Yeah, he, he wore a tweed jacket with patches on the elbow uh, and had glasses. Yeah. But it was an academic. Glasses. Uh, we never really beard. went into. It. Yeah, yeah, definitely an academic. Um, now look, I'm just going to come out and say it. this movie was brought to you by Pepsi. Uh, <laughs> yeah, as was most of the early 1990s in America. <laughs> that is true. That is very true. <laughs> that was their very, big very push true. to separate from Coca Cola. Yes, yes. We'll, we'll just be in every movie that you ever watch, and you'll automatically associate being cool with Pepsi. 
Have a Pepsi. Be cool. Yeah. Um, although I didn't... And I noticed that the Battle of the Bands was sponsored by someone and Reebok. And I went, eh, Reebok. Because there's a lot of there's a lot of 90s high tops in this movie. And I love 90s high tops. Yeah. Like the super giant tongue and <laughs> everything just sticking out. I, I wore those and still do. Uh, still wear 90s style high tops because... <laughs> That's why I'm I'm old and I can do what I want. So fuck you, um, not you personally, just anyone that says I can't. Um, yeah, but you know, I noticed that Pepsi. There was a couple others in there that were, you know, it wasn't like Wayne's World level um, product placement, but still, there was product placement. There's still the Doritos bag, I think. Yes, yeah, the Doritos bag, and there's a couple other things that you just like turn it to the camera, just slightly <laughs> to the camera. There we go. Make sure, make sure you get the label. Get the label. I think Pepsi owns now, Doritos now. I don't know if they did. Oh, that, really? But yeah. Oof, who knows? Pepsi, like Pepsi and Coke, own virtually everything. I, I mean, as as we know from our our discussion on uh, Rollerball, that's, the, yes, that's one exactly. of the teams is <laughs> Pepsi and Coke. <laughs> Yes, yes, that is exactly it. Well, wow, good callback. Well done. Um, now, let me ask you a question. You're, you're a man, you know, in a in a long term stable relationship, and you know you are legally bound to your spouse, I believe. Um, plastic rings really suitable for for proposals? Do you think? No, because even I did better. I don't. I don't. I don't really want to. It's not a well. It, it is a very long story if I get going, but basically, I the weekend I was to propose to my missus, she was picking up a weird vibe for me because I was freaking out. But she thought well, I was, and gonna, rightly so, huh? <laughs> rightly so, right? One hundred percent nervous. <laughs> right, it, 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 it's the it's the cliff's edge. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so she thought I was getting ready to end our relationship. So we had gone out drinking with friends, uh, in and she threw me out of the hotel room. Uh, oh, wow. So I hadn't, I was wait, I was supposed to pick up the ring the next day. Uh, so I, I, you know, it was, it was, you know, just fine. Then get the fuck out. Uh, <laughs> and I was like, fine, fuck it. And I took a key ring off my keys and I gave it to her. And then I went to a gift shop at one of the Smithsonian museums and got a better ring. And nice. that, that was her, her engagement ring. Uh, but yeah, uh, see? so that, even I, I walked past the 25 cent machines that they probably got those plastic <laughs> rings out of, or maybe they yeah. saved it from, I'm sure they still go trick or treating. Oh, look, there's a very good chance that they go trick or treating probably as themselves, yeah. but got nonetheless, uh, let's propose to the girls. <laughs> yeah, Our girlfriends yeah, are most yeah, chaste. Let's do- they they are most chaste, which uh, I couldn't work out where they lived though, like their girlfriends, because they just got to leave. And I'm going, do they have jobs? Do, do they? And then they're at like Ted's house, Ted's father's house with Missy, like towards the end. And I'm going, oh. and then I went, you know what? Stop thinking about it. Don't think this is this is not a movie to think about stuff. I mean, if their if their father didn't end up getting guillotined back in his time, they could have a lot of family money. That is true. Yeah, they, they did the, like the the one cent bank account thing. Like, go back in the past and put one cent in the bank account. Yeah, and let the interest accrue until you you're rich enough. The, in the, the in Philip the J. Fry move. Yes, yes. Again, another show with time travel. Futurama is awesome. Bite my shiny metal ass. Um, where was I? There it is. There's my notes. So we then cut back, and obviously the the guys die, and death death is apparently in shades of grey. Yep. Whoa, close to heaven, and, and we get it. Yeah, it's very close. Yeah, heaven, heaven's sort of like more of a pastel grey and pinks. Um, indifference to hell, which is mostly red. Um, but we get introduced to death, and I, I, I love death in this movie. He is fucking awesome. He is so good. Um, and, and the guy has a cameo towards the end where he plays a British person, which I think is his actual accent. I, I think so. I I remember him largely from uh, he he was one of the guys in Shawshank Redemption, wasn't he? Yes, he was. I think he was a guard in Shawshank Redemption. I want to say, uh, but yeah, I think it's, it's been a minute since I've seen that. But he's he's one of those. Faces I haven't seen that. that... Yes, he, he he's got a. Oh, I remember him from such and such. Now, while we're remembering stuff, um, Melvin. I, I this is the only point in time I've ever heard the the wedgie uh, called a Melvin 
But do you, are you aware of why it's called a Melvin? I am not, because this is also the only point in time that I'm aware of it being called that. And I when I don't know how long it took to make the movie, but when it came yeah. out, I couldn't have been. You said 1991, so I, I, yeah, 1991. I was, I was probably around uh, 10 years old. When this came out, I would definitely know all of the names for a wedgie. Oh, yeah. At, at that point. That, that's like, you, you, it's one of the few things that you have to know yeah. as a 10-year-old child. You have to be aware. And you potentially be all, all, all the different names. You have to be ready. That's right. And the only other thing you need to know is a, a, a large amount of names for your genitals. Um, because you never know when you're going to call something a genital's head. Yeah. Luckily, um, luckily, my yeah. older sister watched Teen Witch quite a lot, and there's a scene where uh, you learn quite a lot of slang in a quick succession. Of, uh, of yes, Teen Witch. Yes. Now, while, while we're chatting on that, do you, why would Death wear underwear? I always saw him as just a complete commando kind of guy. I think it's a courtesy that he does in case he drops out of the sky at people. You, you don't want to see Death's hairy clangers coming coming at your head. You're already dead. That, 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 yeah, you're already dead and you don't want to die of shock. Because really, you know, you don't want the last thing you ever see to be yes, Death's hairy grey clangers coming at you. Oh, yeah. Um, well, actually, now, now, he might be. He is hairless, well, though, uh, from all we can tell. See. So, true. True. I don't want to cast aspersions. <laughs> I don't want to say death gets lazy in the manscaping department. Got enough trouble. You just don't know. Yeah, well, that's it. you got to wear those big, like, totally heavy death robes all the time. Yeah. Which are going to get hot. They have to get hot. So he's not um, really white. He's just covered in talcum powder. <laughs> yes, yeah, that's right. He's covered in talc. Just from shaving it down and, and talcing up. Why not? Now, look, I'm just going to throw this out, but... Even for robots, um, sexual assault is not cool. All right, that that was not cool. Uh, and there are a few like late late eighties, early nineties like abuse in this movie that I went, yeah, that wouldn't cut it today. Yeah, there's there's a yeah, there's a bit of yeah. No, we don't we don't say that anymore because it's not really appropriate or or, or right. Yeah, and, and I'm but sure at the Bill time, Ted will not say it. Well, you know, don't tell me. But you know, if mm. they, they, I'm sure they don't say it in Bill and Ted Three. I, I look, I, I'm not going to tell you. I'm not going to tell you. But I, I, I can say that it, it is now um, culturally sensitive, and it is aware of, um, yes, other people. Now, we we cut very quickly to the boys attempting to possess people, which them possessing Ted's dad and and his mate the cop is very funny. Right, right down to the the dad version of the air guitar. Uh. <laughs> Yeah, it totally sounds like nylon acoustic guitar strings. Yes, yes played with a felt pick. Just oh, <laughs> that that that's weirdly specific. And uh, obviously, I'm going to take your word that that's a thing because I really don't know. I've I didn't realize that picks came in like different materials other than plastic. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There there are felt picks for that softer touch. Um, Oh, there you I, go. I spent a little bit of time dicking around as a guitar player and a bass player before I started doing the best instrument and playing drums. Mm, mm. Well, I can't play any instruments, so more power to you, I say. Um, now, we, we talked about, obviously, the, the New Age hippies, and I'm just going, yeah, that is so, like, 90s New Age. It's not like the Crystal Wielders now, because they're, they're more, like, like Wiccan, weirdo, wannabe... <laughs> witches whereas these were like these were definitely new age hippies oh yeah the, this was more remnants of the 80s which are the aftershocks of the 70s yeah suburbia yeah but but yeah this, white middle class <laughs> yeah they got the crystals at the mall the sage was blessed by somebody named gary <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just, it's just so just oh god why couldn't you just like drink and smoke dope and be happy um uh, although at that point in time i suppose uh, marijuana was still illegal so we probably wouldn't want to show that on the screen uh that would be bad although ted's dad probably you know wants to wants to keep missy happy well see maybe he's getting stuff out of out of evidence just yeah. here you go. a couple of quiet ones just uh just in there keeping her happy because, well, a happy Missy is a happy Missy. Um, and then, you know, the boys get banished. They they go to hell uh, after falling down a totally deep hole. Uh, just, and I just, <laughs> want to play 20 questions? questions. <laughs> yeah. Are you a mineral? Yes. Are you a tank? Yes. <laughs> what? 
Uh, they just went, yeah. uh, they just again, share a brain. Had a, had, yeah, that clearly share a brain. With a, a look, we all know someone that we share partly a brain with. It just happens. Um, or, and, and apparently, uh, Hell is not representative of, of album covers. And I went, yeah, there's parts of it that are a bit close. Yeah. You know, there's yeah, essences bit, bit of the, meatloaf the, the, in there. Yes. Um, and other, yes. other things, so... You know, oh, yeah. Look, name any metal band that's pulled out at least you know one cover that featured Satan on it. It's there. It's it's there. It's you know. I remember most of them. Um, I had most of them. Um, and you know, I, I like how they just you know trot up to Beelzebub and he just goes, "Yeah, it's, you can go. You can go into your own personal hell." And this is this is the bit where we're talking about where everything's very like cartoon and Tim Burton like the weird angles and everything yeah. else. The Alaskan Military School uh, with Colonel Oates. Colonel Oates, like, yes, the yes, dude, sir, dude, sir, sir, <laughs> yes, dude, sir, dude, sir. Sorry, dude, dude, dude. Yes, and yet they have to do a million push-ups. Um, no, infinity, infinity. push-ups. <laughs> And give me infinity. And I like how they go, do you think you'll let us do them girly style? Now, is that where you put your knees down? Yeah, that that's what it was called uh, here in the States in the 80s and 90s. I, I yeah, have clear style. memories from uh, phys ed class, gym class, people talking about that. Okay, because I again, I went, yeah, okay. I, I'm lucky to do push-ups any style. Yeah. Um, well, and I prefer, <laughs> when I hear girly style, I think of, uh, you may you probably have not seen this movie, but a movie called Drumline, that only people who play the drums I know have seen it, for the most part, <laughs> uh, with Nick yeah. Cannon and some other people, about a drumline and a college band. But there's a girl, and they're all doing their, their workout at the beginning of the thing, and the guys are making comments about it, and she just starts doing a one-arm push-up on her knuckles. And oh. they're just, you know, silenced. But that's what I think of when yeah. I hear girly push-ups. Or G.I. Jane. Ah, it's in it. G.I. Jane. Um, now, was it was it Jack Palance that used to do one-arm push-ups on stage? I'm sure it was Jack Palance. Probably. He, he was hard until he died. He was. I'm sure it was Jack Palance. Uh, so anytime anyone says push-ups, I always remember um, the episode of The Young Ones where they have a party. <laughs> and, 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 and Rick's wearing overalls and he, say, and he says to the two girls, do you want me to, do you want to see me do some push-ups? And he does the most like pelvic thrusting bounce up and down push-ups you will ever see. That makes me laugh and laugh. Oh man, I might have to watch that tonight. Oh, let's see that 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 is an '80s touchstone for pretty much everybody, regardless of age. The first time I heard of the Damned. Yeah. Ah, yes, yes. It was actually that was probably the first time I saw Motorhead like actually play live. I had since had seen them here in in Australia when they played live, but it was the first time I'd seen them like actually seen them play. Um, when they do the Ace of Spades on the Bambi episodes. They do. Where they're all getting on the train. Now I'm thinking about that. This is going through my head. But speaking of the dance, <laughs> Bill and Ted are in hell. Yeah. yeah, they are in hell. Their own personal hell, which is what we talked about. Uh, well, that was really good. Pull me back. Uh, yeah, we, so we have the, the yes, the, the dual hell, which is the Alaskan military camp. And then their, their individual hell, which is... Um, Bill, like, having to kiss his grandma. Grandma, just, grandma S. Preston, Esquire. S. Preston, Esquire. Give granny a kiss on the lips. And I'm just like, okay, oh, yep. Yep. But that whole thing, it, it's just, it's Tim Burton all over. It's just like, yeah, super creepy, super weird. And yeah. And then, like, what got me is the, uh, go to the other side is I mean, Ted's Easter Bunny um, horror. You made your brother cry. And, uh, that, Easter Bunny is just the weirdest looking fucking thing ever. It, it just <laughs> yeah, that, that kind of reminded it's, me it's of the thing right. that um, gets pulled out of the hat in the Twilight Zone movie. <gasps> yes, yes, very similar, very similar. Yeah, but uh, that uh, and then obviously they escape there, and then they get chased by all three and uh, through through the tunnels. And it was weird. Well, while they're running through the tunnels, all I could go is, I bet you this is what it looks like behind the scenes um, in the Cenobite hell, I reckon. Oh, nice. <laughs> like, it's just like weird tunnels. That That's what was stuck in my head, was that Cenobite hell just running through there, just opening doors and just full of Cenobites going, hello, it's coming. The box. 
You, you opened it. it. Way came. Oh, so such good movies, such good movies. Um, and of course, it's all non heinous, non, 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 non heinous. <laughs> Again, it's the only time I've ever heard that word used, um, like heinous as a word. Yeah, uh, <laughs> perhaps in uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, but I don't think so. Mm, oh, maybe no. Or my, I, I get the feeling like I may have heard it in some sort of courtroom drama, like in a, in its actually correct usage. Yes, a vicious and <laughs> heinous act. Yes, yes, yes. That's exactly that's where I, I've heard it. I think it, this is Pepsi. It. This is this is Pepsi's opening psyops in the war against Coca Cola was they're trying to create an alternative language uh, rooted yeah, around quite, the culture probably, that they're creating through movies. Yes, through through the the super rad movies. Um, that could be it, actually. And then we get to the sequence where, obviously, they escape back to back to limbo and compete with the Reaper. <laughs> <laughs> this is so much fun. Like, and it just gets progressively more bizarre. You know, like they, they play Battleship, and I'm going, okay, fair enough. Uh, and, they, and they win. Then they play Cluedo, which uh, you guys call it Clue, right? We do. Do you yes. call it Clue? We do. Yeah, yeah it's Cluedo. Uh, which I've never understood the rules to that game like in my entire life never understood the rules to that game I, yeah I, it seems simple it seems so but it also takes a long time I feel like it takes yeah. as long as a Monopoly game sometimes yes uh, and well see Monopoly <laughs> Monopoly's um, I'm a firm believer that game was designed to cause family disharmony it's designed to cause fights because I've yet to play a single game over it where it doesn't end with someone saying fuck this and tipping the bank in the air. <laughs> it's been it's been a long time and I, I, I'm sure the last time I played one that didn't end in tears, it was with modified rules and lots of drugs. Yeah. See, unless, unless you just go, no, we'll just do whatever we want. It's it's no fun. But you follow the rules, it will end badly. It will always fucking end badly. Um now, there's a game in the middle with, with, like, vibrating sports ball players that I don't understand. Ah, okay. Um, that was also a thing that I never had, but I knew two or three of my friends when I was around the age I was when this movie came out had it. It's American football. and Yeah, I, that much I gathered. Okay, and it's an electrified board, and you set up your players, like... Like uh, like a football game is getting ready to start. And there is a teeny mm-hmm. tiny ball that you put on whatever player. And you turn on the yeah. thing and it vibrates. And, you know, sometimes you get a touchdown and sometimes your character just spins around in circles. That really is a thing that happens. <laughs> I think I maybe only played it once. But it's just a vibrating board and it's chaos. You just you do the plays like it's the game, but you never know what's going to fucking happen. Because the board just vibrates and they, they could fall over, they could spin around in circles. Yeah. That sounds like hours of entertainment where you should be on drugs. <laughs> uh. Five out of seven. It's best of seven. And then they play Twister, which is very funny. Very, very funny. Like that foot just going out past like the Bill's face. <laughs> <laughs> it's very, very funny. And yeah, dude. Um, and obviously they defeat him and uh, there's a don't fear the Reaper joke, which I thought was great. Um, <laughs> I heard that. I guess I heard that. And uh, then, you know, he takes them to heaven, which we've mentioned is in pastel greys and, and pinks. They they mug three people. They uh, give us a couple of lines uh, from 80s music videos, which everyone knows because every rose has its thorn. And um, I like when Death has to, uh, apologizes to God after they talk to him. Yes, I'm sorry they melvin yeah, me. <laughs> I've really tried to get this to take on, but I bet more people now say Station than Melvin. Oh, yes. I know people that still say station. I've, I've received texts that just say station. Oh, nice. The only, the only <laughs> just, random... Just like, huh? No, I just go, like, one of my buddies who lives like, in a different state, who I, I probably get to see him once every five years or so because I said we... Yeah, um, like, so we chat, but we don't see each other. But I will randomly just get like a text or a message in, in, in Facebook that just says station. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing else. I've I've got a friend that uh, to become a, a park ranger he had to become a cop. So every once in a while, really, every, yeah, uh, where it was to to be the level he is to carry a gun. Basically, oh, right. he had, okay. he so, had yeah. to go to uh, the police academy. 
Uh, so every once right. in a while, I, I send him, you know, 1312 or ACAB or something <laughs> like that. <laughs> right. As, as you do. As you, know, you do. Not even a one atom 12. <laughs> I'll have to remember that. It's been a couple of weeks since I checked in on him. Yeah, see, you should check in. Just give him a one out of 12. <laughs> Just one out of 12, one out of 12. See, that's, again, showing my incredible age. Um, and look, speaking of age, I'm not sure I want to go to heaven Is if all you do is play charades. Because, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it didn't seem like a fun time to me. Now, hopefully they were waiting for something cooler to happen, but that could also be yeah. heaven. It's always waiting for something cooler to happen. There is Marilyn Monroe, or be, I'm sure... Mm. Uh, What's his face uh, from Pulp Fiction could correct me on who's Jane Mansfield and who's Marilyn Monroe and uh... no, probably. But yeah, there's a lot of like you know, there's obviously Einstein and a bunch of other people that are yeah. well clearly dead, but you know having fun and yeah, I don't know. Like I said, charades not my bag. But speaking uh, of station, still, sta- well, that's right. We're introduced to station, the smartest uh, scientist the greatest in science- the universe. Yes. Well, is it the smartest guy or the, just the the smartest being? I, I think being? it was yeah, smartest smartest living being in the universe. Well, yeah, oh, yeah, they're in heaven, so previously living. But I don't know, fucking who cares? Because um, station appears to be quite gender neutral um, for all apparent visible signs, aside from his uh, amazing Martian butt, uh, which is quite large. Uh, I remember my ex-wife getting really, really upset when one of, one of my friends mentioned that she had a really amazing Martian butt. <laughs> um, <laughs> some people just can't take a joke. Uh, so <laughs> the the boys come back from the dead, which is great. Uh, Bill pulls a worm from his ear, and that looks like it was a legit worm it, that he pulled from his ear. It did. <laughs> it did not look, you know, sometimes they'll go the goofy route and it'll be a gummy worm. Yeah, yeah, and be all stretchy, and be like, Aah. but that looked like it was actually a real worm. <laughs> like, yeah, just lay, just lay down. We'll put it in your ear, dude. Yeah, it'll, it'll be fine, dude. You pull out and go, ah, dinner's over, worm, dude. And it's just like, <laughs> okay. I think the um, buzzer truly, back into uh, my head, dude. <laughs> That's right. I love that. It's like, ugh, it's just like scraping in his hair. Um, and then they go to Builder's Emporium. Which is uh, such a generic which, name, but there's places like that here, the you know, Home Depot and Lowe's yeah. and stuff like that. And I'm sure that there were. I feel like Emporium was used a lot more in the 80s and 90s. Well, it's classier, you know. Emporium says class. It says you know it's, they've got lots of stuff, um, and it's everything you could ever ever need. Uh, we get our Hitchcock and moment. I like to throw. Yes, we do. We do. Um, <laughs> sorry, I just, I've I've. I'm not even going to explain what I what I just saw. It makes no sense whatsoever. Um, <laughs> you said time. I've changed time. position. Maybe, and maybe you never know. To, to, maybe it's a glitch in the matrix. That's what it was. I just saw a glitch in the matrix. That's what it was. It was. Um, so you you said we get a Hitchcock moment, and, and then I spaced because I was thinking about something else. Uh, for those of you watching at home. Darren will now explain our Hitchcock moment. Our Hitchcock moment. We have a uh, station and death going through the aisle with the shopping cart or trolley. Do you call it a trolley over there? Trolley. Oh, trolley. Yeah. Uh, yeah trolley. Bill, the, there's an oddly spaced payphone within the store that Bill and Ted are talking mm. to. Totally evil Bill and Ted on. But there's, uh, there's a chap standing there looking pretty cool. He's got a rad leather jacket. He's lighting up a cigarette, and Death says, you know, see you real soon, and sort of smirks. Real soon. And that was our director. <laughs> that was. That was our director. That's correct. And But, do you, like, th- again, this is a point in time where you could smoke indoors. Oh, yeah. But you could walk through walk through a store with a cigarette, and I'm there going, oh, my God. That, that seems like a million years ago now. It does. I, I read a it lot really of things kind of feel like that right now I, for both of us. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Isolation. Um, yeah, you hear people talking about. Going, oh, you know, I went to a party. What? <laughs> with, what like, with lots of other people, all in the same room at the same time. Yeah, that. Uh, I vaguely remember those things. Yeah. Remember blowing out birthday candles? <laughs> yeah, that's right. 
<laughs> Blowing out birthday candles. You know, even before, like, from your time when everything went to shit, um, I always questioned the logic of, of eating cake after someone's, like, just spat all over it. Yeah, particularly with all the videos of people's false teeth falling out into the cake. You kind of have to imagine yeah, exactly. the smaller things then. Mm, yeah, particulates. Yes. And who knows what else coming out of people's mouths. Um, I guess uh, spend your birthday with those you just, love. Yeah. Uh, I did attend... <laughs> On a complete tangent, I did attend a birthday once where um, the person whose birthday it was, um, it was, it was all adults uh, at this party, and um, they decided that they would actually try and fart the candles out. Um, <laughs> oh, God. Before or after some beverages? Needless to say, oh, no, there were many beverages. <laughs> many, many beverages. Needless to say, no one ate cake. Uh, <laughs> Much to the chagrin of his then partner, who had obviously spent a lot of time um, on that cake. But still, you know, lessons learned. Lessons learned. It's not something. Lessons learned. Now, one of the lessons that, uh, going back to this movie, is where do they get the money to buy all these building supplies? I, I, I'm sure they had one of their dad's credit cards. Or the girls. Yeah. They had See, credit I, I, cards that the girls had and gave them. Ah, uh, yeah, that's right. That Rufus gave them and the first movie. Yep. He's just got me. Uh, I, I thought maybe Death had given it a bit of these are not the droids you're looking for as so they just walk through. Just... He could have. Uh, he, he was very yeah, powerful, and I think they were not totally utilizing his I, I am at your command. But again, that's no. Bill and Ted's nature is that ultimately what makes the utopia is, you know, I just want to hang out and eat chips and play yeah. play my instrument badly, but I'm having fun sort of thing. That, that's right. Uh, uh, the, you do you, I'll do me, just hang out, just and drink Pepsi Cola. Drink Pepsi. Um, drink Pepsi. Drink, drink Pepsi. Uh, we then, we, we see the station and station become giant station, which are, is is very cool. And he's very cool. Station! Um, although, giant station does change size a couple of times during this movie. <laughs> yeah, you know, maybe they send a part of them, themselves out to do something. Maybe, maybe. Who knows? It was it was kind of weird. We then see the building montage in the back of the truck, um, or back of the van, I should say, with some. Um, I think it's Battle Stations is playing in the background. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you're correct. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I remember what it was. Uh, we and we see obviously the good robots, which are kind of cool. Um, you know, very very Home Depot, very uh, very cosplay actually. Yeah. <laughs> They're kind of cool. Some steampunk, a little bit. Mm. Some hardware. Oh, hardware is such a great movie. Um, We've talked a lot about a, and, about a lot of good movies. And I argue uh, that this is a fun movie if it's not a good movie. And it could still be a good movie. I think it's a good movie, but it's, it's, it's a fun movie. I mean, you know, you said it, it, it's, you know what, I'm just going to hang out. I'm just going to hang out, have some fun, play my, play my instrument, drink Pepsi Cola. And just, yeah, just do whatever. And it, it, it emphasizes that. It's... I think that's why it really it appeals because there, there's no that's the message just fucking have fun be excellent Do whatever. to each other to each other that's right be excellent to each other but they gotta get to the battle um, of bands we do, and they get there. You know, they the the robots come out. We see that. We learn that reaping burns a lot of calories, and we should not discount death's butt, uh, which is food for thought. Uh, and we're we're in like the last probably I think it's about fifteen twenty minutes of the movie, and we get the face off on stage with uh, Bill and Ted versus Evil Bill and Ted, and um, their robots. And I, I like it. even the robots just go, oh, nice work, Bill and Ted. <laughs> And then have their heads blown off oh, no. and explode. Very One much punch and they explode. With the explosions. Primus had fun. Yes. That's really it. But ladies and gentlemen, Primus. And I'm going, surely in 1991, Primus were in a battle of the bands. I don't, I don't remember. I, when I first saw them, I didn't recognize them as a real band. Oh. Uh, but I, uh, again, okay. I was. That time I was listening to Billy Idol and whatever well, the other stuff everybody in my house had because I had no real money. Yeah, that, that well, you had five bucks and your yeah, dad took it. Took it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you got five bucks, give it to me. Uh, here's a tape, just go away. Um, so that's what dads do. And yeah, well, that's but even, even because obviously I saw it more as an adult, I went, 
I was vaguely aware of Primus, uh, and I went, you know, why? Not that I'm, I don't like Primus, I do. Um, yeah, but why were they in the Battle of the Bands? And like second to last, <laughs> you know. So it's whatever time it was, like eleven uh, fifty. Apparently, <laughs> when everyone's left. <laughs> anyway, nonetheless, so, baby. And Bill and Ted always um, get the last slot. They got it for their history yes, presentation. Yes, they always. But mm-hmm. I mean, of course, we find out why in in this one why they got such yes special treatment. Yes, yes, we do because we learned that Miss Woodrow is actually Rufus, and that that is a a weird reveal. Yeah, no <laughs> other explanation uh, other than no the the play to logic of if it wasn't me, would you really be here right now? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, hey, I arrived just in time to give you the the slot in in the thing. Okay. Sure, why not? Let's just fucking roll with it. Um, and, of course, you know, before that happens, we get Denomalous arrives in the time machine and we get, a, we get a game of we do this after we win. After we win, we go back in time and we, we set up this. And I, I love how it goes back and forth. And they go, aha, but only the people who win can really go back in time and set it all up. And we set up the key and we set up the gun. Dun, dun, dun. Which is a valuable <laughs> life lesson to learn. History is written by yes. the victors. Well, yes. Point to any historic text and that will explain it. And then ask potentially the people on the losing side what they think. And it might be marginally different. What is it? One man's terrorist is another man's freedom fighter? Yep. Uh, so anyway, not getting overly political in that. So we see that. Um, and conveniently, Denormalist controls uh, all of the TV. So apparently everything's being now transmitted across the entire globe at the same time and it's lucky that so many people are watching tv yeah just um, like the truman show because we're not since we're doing movie references exactly <laughs> yes everyone's watching at the same time we're not worried about the parts of the world where they're potentially asleep fuck it there's someone watching tv then again there's probably always someone watching tv regardless of where you are somewhere um, especially in the 90s somewhere like drinking so- all that pepsi well, that's exactly it. You're up all night. Mm. And you maybe maybe you're up all night with Mac at night. Because it's Mac tonight. Um, another weird 90s reference. Was that 90s? Mac tonight? Yeah, I, I think remember. that was sometime around the early 90s. Yeah. I don't know. It doesn't matter. Um, so we do that. Death Melvin's Denomalous. And uh, I think he liked it. Yes. There there did seem to be a, a look of surprised pleasure was was yes. my take i i there, yeah. he he might be a little less grumpy from now on potentially um my actual note just said oh my <laughs> um <laughs> oh george takai it's, it's so, such a gift to the world and so we do that the boys then decide to actually do some real real work and learn how to play their instruments and take an intensive 16 months to uh, practice with two weeks of medieval England for their honeymoon. Which was nice. And come back with... Yeah, look, it was nice that they had a honeymoon and, you know, they took the girls with them because I think they deserved it. They've really suffered long and hard with these two idiots. And um, although, if they were... If it was 16 months, how many how many months out of those months were those poor women pregnant and dealing with babies? Did they really have a lot of time to practice? Yeah, I mean, the babies looked really young. So, I, I mean, well, seven, they had maybe six, yeah. six or seven months of non-baby related life unless they sent Gee. them. Uh, <laughs> Babes, we got to practice. Why don't you go be pregnant some <laughs> other time? <laughs> go, go, go over here and be pregnant and just, just oh cool you had a baby again, they, I'm gonna name him Ted <laughs> yeah regardless of whether he's a boy or a girl because I believe in Ted, Bill and Ted 3 they have daughters true so that, that'll that be interesting interesting how they I'm sure mm. they'll they'll roll with it uh, <laughs> Yes. Well, you know, continuity is not, not really something they worry about in these movies. Um, so they do that. Everyone learns to play. They come back with um, some interesting facial hair. <laughs> That's for sure. He's, he's got the ZZ Top yeah. beard Bill, Bill, Bill has. Mm. And what, Ted has a little bit of a Constantine pirate? Oh, see, I, I would have gone Dolly. Okay, yeah, a less twirly Dolly. Yeah, slightly less twirly, darling. Um, don't know. Don't want to overthink it. They do it, um, and apparently we learn that. Uh, well, we get a bit of a bit of an intro for death. 
which uh, yeah, I like the the little little rap that he does because sooner or later you're gonna dance with the Reaper. Oh, I'm <laughs> sure cool. that was one of his tracks on his solo album. Oh, it was. Yeah, it didn't do so well. Um, but we do learn that the best place to be is here and the best time to be is now. We, and you know what? I think that that's the whole theme for this movie. Here and now. That's all i got to worry about because nothing else fucking matters. It's very zen or... Uh, it is. Maybe, maybe, yeah. Uh, it's sage-like almost. Just it, it's, it, it's very... It, it's almost 80s slacker, you know? <laughs> It's just like, yeah, you know, everything's... And, and you know, they've got the flannel, they've got the, the two large clothes, which is, again, very 80s slacker, very Gen X slacker, uh, which appeals to, to, to my uh, my old face. And then, you know, they, they rock out with, as we mentioned, God, uh, God Made Rock and Roll for Everyone, which is not my favourite Kiss track ever. And we get a montage uh, across the, the end credits, which has some really great headlines. Uh, crops are up. Uh, the Dow is up. Uh, I think Wild Stallions play the Grand Canyon twice. Uh, <laughs> there's uh, Death wins the the Daytona 500 and didn't realize he could run that fast. Um, what else? Barefoot. Too. Uh, they eventually play Mars. <laughs> yeah, barefoot. Well, weirdly enough, now talking about him being barefoot, the scene where he falls from the sky after they're in heaven, he's wearing black high tops. Is he? Yes. You only see it for like a second, but I went, he's wearing black high tops, motherfucker. Uh, rather <laughs> than being barefoot, foot, which is what you see. <laughs> ah, it's because white men can't jump. Um, oh, see, Wesley Snipes. Good on you, Wesley. Um, you probably should have paid your taxes, buddy. Um, They'll come for you. They went after yeah, Capone for that, that they, shit. They'll go after Wesley Snipes. Yeah, they did. And, well, you know, all that, all that uh, highfalutin uh, blade money wasn't going to cover it all. Although Wesley did teach us to always bet on black. Um, anyway, so yeah, the end of, end of the end of the movie, we, we, we transferred out, and really all we've learned is that, yeah, just hang out, rock. Just live life here and now. And that's what I've been doing because the clock's ticking and I haven't got much time left. So thanks for joining me, mate. It, it, it's been an adventure to say the least. It, it's always been a pleasure eventually, no matter what predicament you find me in. <laughs> Mm. And I, I have found you and or put you in a number of different predicaments and somehow you've always come out stronger, faster, almost bionic man-like at the other end. And uh, yes, so that's it. There is no more. When the door shuts on your return back to your time, it will not open again. Wow. I'll always be excellent to your memory. You have been listening to Witch versus the Doomsday Clock a proud member of the Legion Podcast Network. Come join the rest of the Meat Popsicles in our Facebook group, facebook.com slash groups slash witch versus the doomsday clock.